So you've put a ton of work in your lathe part and it's time for the part off. Even though this could be the last step, it is one of the most important. And doing it incorrectly could ruin all your hard work and your tooling. Today, I'm gonna to show you a few tips and tricks on the best way to use the craft tools and how to use hastooling.com to pick up the right tool for the job. Parting off is the most efficient and productive way to separate machine parts from raw materials. So completed parts can be ejected into a parts catcher or partially completed parts can be transferred to a sub spindle. So here are the cutoff components available on Haas tooling. Blocks, blades and inserts. We have three sizes of cutoff blocks. Then we have three different widths of inserts to select from. Two millimeter, three millimeter or four millimeter. There are also three blades. Each blade is made with different seat sizes and widths to accommodate the corresponding insert. This means the blades and inserts are not interchangeable. However, the blades are all the same height and they will all work with any block you choose. That's due to the block design and tapered edge on top of the clamp. This allows any one of the three blades to fit securely against the face of the block when tightened. Finally, we have the wrench to place and remove the insert quickly. No screws or clamps are needed for this. So let's head to the website to select the right tools to cut off this two inch diameter steel. We are running this demo on a ST20Y. So I will select the one inch block for that turret. Part number 01-0151. This handy pop-up window shows you which block goes with which machine. Second is the insert. We have three options of width. Let's go down the middle and choose a three millimeter insert 02-0493, which is the most common. And the final tool that's required is the blade. And the 01-0154 blade is automatically chosen for us because of the previous selection of the insert. Okay, so let's assemble these three parts together and load them into the turret. Did I do something wrong? Or did I order the wrong tool? Let's go back to the website and look at the specs. Ah, it won't fit fully assembled. But there are clear instructions on how to put this together in the turret. So let's take it apart and follow the instructions and then let's put it in the turret. There are also maximum hangout values for each blade on the website. However, if you do need to go a bit longer, maybe to clear a part or clear the chuck, that's fine. As long as you adjust the speeds and feeds accordingly. So now that we understand how to assemble the tool, we can get into the setup. I've correctly loaded the block and the blade hangout is two inches. It's within my recommended limit and there is plenty of clearance to cut this two inch diameter solid bar. And I've also touched off the insert using the tool presetter. Now there's two crucial points that we need to check before we start parting off. First is to make sure the tool center height is within five thou of center line. Being too far above or below center line will increase the chances of the insert breaking. Now the block and the blade are precision tools. So if you check the height from the bottom of the block to the tip of the insert, it's gonna be about one or two thou higher than a regular turning tool. The slight offset is due to compensation for bend when forces are applied. And the second point is coolant direction. Aiming the coolant directly at the insert is obvious, right? But try to visualize the tool as it gets deeper into the cut. Does the coolant direction now spray against the material rather than the insert? Then this may require aiming the coolant from a different direction and if available, always use high pressure coolant. Now my program is written, I just need to enter the correct speeds and feeds. So let's head over to the speed and feed chart, 
which is located under 02-0493 insert. There is no depth of cut to deal with, just find your material, 0.148 steel in our case, find the insert width that you are running with, and there are your ranges. Note 3 does let you know to start in the middle range of the recommended speeds and feeds. Now, it's very important to stop and take a moment and think about the speeds and feeds here, especially if this is a new part or new material and it's not a proven program. Parting off is almost always the quickest sequence of your machining operation. So if cost isn't the issue, what is there to be worried about? Well, it's almost one of the last operations performed. So, after you spent all that valuable time machining the part, this tiny little insert in this flimsy looking blade could ruin all the good work that you've done, resulting in scrapping your part and ruining your tool. That's why I like using the blade style tool for cutting off. You might lose the insert and damage one end of the blade, but hey, you have another blade edge for your insert and don't risk losing the block, like you would do if you would use a groove tool. Purchasing another blade is way cheaper than buying a new groove tool. So if you're a little unsure about where to start with your speeds and feeds, I suggest you start with the mid range on your speeds and set the feed rate towards the low end of the range and increase the feed gradually to improve your chip control as you become more confident. So my material and work holding is solid and my cut is gonna be near the jaws. So I'll run at the maximum feeds and speeds recommendations. So I'll enter 500 surface feet per minute here and the feed rate of 8 thou per revolution, which comes to about surface meters of 160 and a feed rate of 0.2 millimeters. Now the next bit is critical to maintaining good tool life. As the tool reaches the center and you max out your spindle speed, you start losing your surface speed. You'll start losing chip control, you'll increase tool wear, and you may even break your insert. So here's a tip. To prevent any issues, it is generally recommended that you reduce your feed by 50 to 75% when you reach about a quarter of an inch or five millimeters from the center. So here, I'll program to run about 3,000 per rev or 0.07 millimeters per rev. So let's watch this cut without our critical coolant to see the insert perform. Now I can tell you that the chips that are breaking off nicely are actually thinner than the groove width. The unique geometry of the insert is forcing that chip not only to curl around the insert to form a spiral, but also the sides to curl inwards so when it does break off with this feature of high pressure coolant it's much easier for the chip to evacuate this narrow slot. Oh by the way this insert's ran quite a few parts already if you look at it, it's still in great shape. Now we've all run that stubborn gummy material that refuses to break a chip whatever speeds and feeds are used. If going to a smaller width part off insert doesn't help, another good tip here is that you can always reprogram to peck instead. Just remember that pecking will reduce your tool life. Let's show an example with this non-alloy gummy material running with regular plunge cut. Lots of long chips that could possibly build up around your tool and your part. That's not very good. Lots of problems will occur, especially if this was a part ready to hand off to a sub spindle. So let's convert the plunge to a peck and leave all the other parameters alone. So we'll add this line right after the approach to the part. G75 for pecking. And we'll use X20 thou 0.02 as our cutoff point and we'll plunge in increments of 8 thou and leave the feed rate at 4. Then we're going to go to setting 22 and change the retraction to 5 thou. Now these numbers can be adjusted depending on the severity of the chip control issues you have. We're going to leave the feed and speeds as a previous demo and let's run this again. Great, so you can see that the pecking method actually gave us better results with better chip control. And for fun, 
I've laid out all the chips from the cutting demos we did today. We've got the chips from the low alloy steel. We've got the chips from the plunge from the gummy material and then from the same material with the pecking. And all these and your tool life will only improve when you use high pressure coolant. Well, that's it. Cheers. Thanks for watching. I had a good time putting this video together for you. Enjoy cutting or parting off. <laughs>